Psychologists think of it as hedonic happiness versus eudaimonic. Have you heard of that? Mm -hmm. that yeah, you, yeah. We, can, can you explain to the audience the difference? Yeah, so hedonic happiness you can think of as sort of the sex, drugs, and rock and roll. All the things that bring you a dopamine high, and they're actually quite self-centered. So it could be food, I mean, like chocolate or yeah. money or follows on social media or anything that gives you a physical pleasure, a sensual mm -hmm. pleasure, or like a little ego high, right? What, whatever it is, but it's all about you. And the dopamine certainly emerges in your brain. It it's, gives you a little high, but then that high is followed immediately by a dip, which leaves you craving for more. Mm -hmm. And we're in a society that chases those things. And so we're in like a hamster wheel, running, 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 always wanting more. And we can't, sustain that form of happiness. But if you look at eudaimonic happiness, which is the happiness we get out of connection with something beyond ourselves. So for example, mm. doing community service or helping out a friend or connecting with nature, or if you're spiritual, connecting with the divine or whatever it is, it's beyond you having a greater purpose, working for your local like environmental nonprofit or, you know, whatever it is, that form of or caring for others in whatever capacity that form of happiness is not a high that comes and goes it's sustained and research shows that the people who live lives characterized by compassion they actually live longer have lower inflammation at the cellular level recover from disease faster have better psychological health have better physical health and my favorite study actually looked at a group of people that had gone through very stressful life experiences like war. And those people tend to have shorter lives because they, extreme stress shortens your life. But they mm -hmm. found there was a subgroup of people among those that just kept living these long lives. And they were like, well, what's, what's differentiating these people? And all of them in some way lived lives characterized by compassion. They were involved in community service or something. And it's just so powerful. And I think we all know what does it feel like to go help a friend in need, you know, we may have been feeling crummy that day, but afterwards you feel amazing. Like the quote unquote helpers high, but there's nothing better than that. But all of society is marketing at us other things and trying to tempt us. But when you meditate a lot, you start to just see through it. It's like, I could watch that movie or not. I could drink that alcohol or not. I could do this. It's like, it doesn't really, you're not hooked anymore, but you also see through it. And the other day, I have to share this with you because I was talking to this teenager. He'd been meditating forever since he was eight. And I said, so do you think do you feel different from your friends? And he said, yeah, he's like, they're really into like cars and they want a big house. They want a car. I was like, ah, I see through that. And I'm like, wow, man, like if everybody's meditated as a kid, they would be focusing their life on something beyond themselves, something that's actually going to lead to lasting fulfillment, but also wisdom and fun and play because you can play and have more joy when you're not stuck in mm -hmm. the wanting all the time. Thank you so much for watching. Just FYI, we post a new video almost every day. So make sure you comment and subscribe below so you don't miss out on anything. And if you enjoyed this video, I think you're really going to love this one as well. And if you ever want to see a playlist of all of my podcasts or all of the plot twists or any other category of videos, you can find links to those in the description below.